Hello everyone out there in YouTube, Rumble, and Xland. Xland, that's right. Uh, welcome back to Diego. No, what's up, Diego? Okay, and uh, let's talk some more about this abortion call that and just like crap, all right? Let's get through this goddamn episode, all right? Because uh, the new episode's coming out pretty soon here, so let's fucking uh, get rid of this episode here. This is episode seven of season two of and Just Like Crap. Okay, I'm Diego, and I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view because that's what I do here, okay? So basically, lady, ladies, if you're watching this, okay, basically I'm going to tell you what the guys aren't going to fucking tell you. Okay, with your boyfriend who's probably sitting right next to you, okay, who doesn't want to fucking hear this shit because he, he's gonna, he knows that you're gonna fucking yell at him if he sits there. So he's probably gonna leave right now. Bye, dude. Bye. Bye. Yeah, or your husband or whoever the fuck is there sitting next to you right now. Okay, yeah, they're gonna fucking leave. Okay, uh, they better leave. Okay, because I'm gonna tell the truth. Okay, that's what I do here. Okay, uh, all bullshit aside. Okay, now I got nothing against fucking uh, chick shows. Okay, I, I review chick flicks. That's what I do. I was waiting for these episodes to drop. I was reviewing your favorite chick flicks. Yes, I was. Like fucking uh, Dirty Dancing and Pretty Woman and Breakfast at Shippenies and all these other fucking bullshit fucking romantic movies. All right, because most of them are, are crap. All right, and this show is no exception. Okay, uh, but uh, while I was waiting for these episodes to drop, okay, that's what I've been doing. Okay, so I know I understand the genre and I get it. I got nothing against the genre. Okay, I've seen a lot of shitty chick flicks. I've seen some good ones too, and I review those too. I review the good ones. Okay, there's some good ones that I. I've reviewed okay okay <laughs> so i'm not biased okay i'm not like oh all, all fucking women shit sucks no it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't okay this show definitely does you know I, I was a big fan of sex and city i enjoy sex and city i did not like the way the men were portrayed on that show but other than that i mean the show was entertaining and, that, and that's the bottom line is it was entertaining okay it was bullshit it wasn't realistic okay but it was entertaining Okay, uh, this is not even entertaining. Okay, well, I will say the season two of it, just like crap, is a little bit better. And, it's, and the bar is real low. A little bit better than season one. Okay, season one was just a fucking, uh, a big fucking case of diarrhea. A diarrhea that lasted fucking eight weeks. Okay, that, that's what season one was. This is not quite as bad. It's not good, but it's not quite as bad. I can see where they're making an effort to try to change things up. Okay, to what Sex and City used to be. Okay, you've got the fucking, uh, you've got the sexual partners that only last one episode now. That They brought that back from Sex and City. You know, some girl would meet a guy. She liked the guy. She'd fuck the guy. She'd find something wrong with the guy. It's always her finding something wrong with him. It's never him finding something wrong with her. Okay. So she finds something wrong with him, and then she doesn't fuck him anymore. All right? That's it. Next episode, Rinse and Repeat. That's what Sex and the City was. At least for the first, like, three seasons it was. And then the guys started just hanging around because, you know, girls wanted relationships and shit, right? But for the first three seasons, the men were just disposable. They were just disposable fuck buddies, okay? Uh, they're starting to get back to that now. They're going back to the fuck, and there's something quirky or weird about this sexual partner, so now you got to get rid of them, okay? And usually it's something supposed to be something funny, something to do with their job, you know, uh, some stupid like that. Like, 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 Carrie dates a guy who writes short stories. So, what's his sexual hang up is that he comes too fast. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's, they go, oh, gotta get rid of him. You know, just shit like that. You know, uh, that was every episode of Sex in the City. Okay. And this is no different. This is the same fucking shit. All right. Uh, so, uh, okay, so now they're doing that again, which is an improvement because they didn't do that last season, okay? But they're doing that again, and we haven't seen that in a while. The problem is these women are not, are not like some decent looking 34, 35 year olds anymore. They're fucking 58 years old, okay? They're in their late 50s now. Okay, and that's just says nobody wants to see that shit. Nobody wants to see these. Oh, you know, that's like watching the Golden Girls having sex. Nobody wants to fucking see that shit. Okay, not not the mainstream audience. I know there's some dudes, some weirdos on porn that don't fucking want to watch that shit. But no one in mainstream audience wants to see that shit. Okay, and even on porn, they just want to fucking see it. And that's it. They don't want to hear the talking. They don't want the, how they met. They don't want to hear the fucking romantic lines or or the foreplay or the fucking or, or how how they seduced each other or anything. Nobody. They don't give a shit about that. Okay. Okay, uh, and we don't want to fucking see it. Okay, I don't want to fucking see it. All right, but that's what they gave us. That's what they gave us. All right, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Kim Cattrall was smart to fucking stay away from the show. Although I heard a rumor that she's gonna come back. Uh, she's gonna do like a cameo or something on this show. Okay, well, I don't fucking know. Who the fuck asked for season? Nobody asked for fucking season two. But that's what we got. Okay, but we're not getting Sex and the City, just so you know. Okay, and just like crap is not fucking Sex and the City. It's got a few of the same characters. Okay, but they're not they're not being who they used to be. Okay, uh, they've been replaced. They've been replaced with these new characters that we don't give a shit about. Like. Seema, what the fuck is Seema? Seema's just this fucking uh, boss bitch, uh, 50 something year old woman who's fat, okay? But she thinks she's fucking Joan Collins, okay? She treats everyone like fucking shit. She treats everyone like shit. Okay, that's Seema, 
Okay, no wonder she's fucking alone and can't get a guy. All right, uh, then you got Naya, okay, who's a strong, independent black woman college professor, okay, who, who always lecturing about Black History Month uh, and all of her conversations that she has, even when people don't fucking ask about it, and she fucking tells them anyway, okay, and she's lonely because her husband left her because she can't have any kids because she's too fucking old, okay, like and she couldn't see that coming, okay. I don't give a shit about her and her goddamn chocolate soup play, and that's she's gonna spend Valentine's Day by herself. So who gives a fuck? I don't give a fuck about her. I don't care about her. She's just there for fucking BLM fans. Okay, they're trying to get BLM fans to watch this show. That's the only reason she's fucking there. Okay? Fuck her. Okay, who's the other one? Lisa Todd Wexley, okay? She's a rich white, a rich black woman, okay? Uh, she has a rich black husband, okay? Uh, and they live in a rich fucking uh, Manhattan fucking penthouse, a multi-million dollar fucking penthouse with their fucking kids. They go to fucking rich, expensive private schools, okay? And she's apparently a documentarian filmmaker, okay? And she's been working on the same fucking movie for eight years, okay? Good thing her husband fucking pays the bill, but she disrespects her husband. She treats him like shit. He's a pussy. He's the real one. He's a real wife in the fucking relationship. He's got to beg her for sex. He's got beg her just to fuck so he can eat her out okay uh he lets his fucking wife control him he lets his children walk all over him he has no fucking balls at all okay and she's happy with that way meanwhile while her husband has no balls but yet he pays for everything she's over here lusting after her fucking underage boys yeah she lusts after underage boys okay yeah that, that's her contribution to the relationship all right okay once again couldn't give a shit about her Okay, and who was that? Everybody, I, like, I gotta fucking go oh, and Shay. Oh man, the less said about Shay, the better. Okay, she's a fucking ugly trans thing. Bad enough, we already got a, a Charlotte's daughter is already a fucking ugly trans thing. Thing. Okay, but now we gotta have Shay Diaz as ugly. I mean, it's bad enough we gotta deal with fucking Miranda's ugly face every episode, but now we gotta deal with fucking Shay Diaz too. And they're not even together anymore. But was she still in every fucking episode? Why? I don't give a fuck. I don't like this fucking trans fucking thing. She was never a fucking trans thing before. I don't know what the fuck this bitch is, but I do know something. Okay, I. Know that uh, this woman, this Sarah Ramirez, who plays fucking Shay Diaz on this fucking show, uh, her career was in the fucking toilet until she went trans. Once she went trans, then she's already getting acting roles again. Okay, that's kind of how it works in Hollywood. You ever wonder why they're all on strike now? I couldn't give two fucking shits. Okay, the writers, okay, the producer, they're all on fucking strike. Right, the writers, the actors are all on strike right now. Okay, because they're not getting paid enough. They're not getting paid enough to produce bullshit like this. Nobody wants to fucking see this shit, man. God damn. All right, this is what they want to see. It's not what fucking the average person wants to see. It's definitely not what the fucking Sex and City fans want to see. Not what I want to see. All right, moving right along. Okay, so where did we leave off last? Oh, yeah. Real quickly, if you cannot handle the way I talk, okay, get the fuck out. I'm not going to change my language for you, okay? Uh, you know, I, I got to tell you the truth, okay? That's what I do here. I'm very blunt, okay? I'm very frank. So if you don't like it, get the fuck out of here right now, okay? I will not censor myself, okay? I'm not trying to hear your feelings. I don't fucking know you. Okay, but I'm going to tell you the fucking truth. What a, what a straight guy thinks about these fucking shows, about these women, these episodes, these situations, everything. Okay, because that's what I fucking do here, right? If you don't like it, okay, you know, uh, if you can't handle it, get the fuck out right now. All right, there you go. Now, where did we leave off last time? Oh, yes. Uh, we left off. Uh, with uh, Charlotte. Charlotte's in the fucking card store and she sees some fucking hot, sexy guy who's sitting there selling poems, a dollar a poem. Well, Anthony calls her. And says that all of his fucking, uh, all of his fucking steroid addicted fucking uh, delivery men that wear the tight rompers for his bakery service, okay, uh, they all quit uh, because he told them they couldn't do steroids anymore, okay, uh, because they were doing steroids right in front of him, like they were, like that would ever happen in real life. But so anyway, so they quit, and he just got invited to the Drew Barrymore show, okay, the Drew Barrymore show, Drew Barrymore show, show, goddamn, all right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I show that nobody watches, okay? <laughs> She's like, Drew Barrymore is a fucking has-been. I'm sorry, but she is. And she used to be in my top ten. She was. Uh, but she's a fucking, she's a fucking, a psycho slut, okay? Uh, she's a fucking drug addict, okay? She's a fucking alcoholic. She's a narcissist, shopaholic, fucking media whore. And all, and she was, and all that was before she was even 14 years old, okay? So you can imagine that she didn't get much better uh, later on in life, all right? Uh, Y'all know her fucking story. Big fucking deal. Anyway, she got her own talk show now. She's trying to be the next Oprah, the next Wendy Williams, you know, that kind of bullshit, you know? Uh, trying to get all these fucking middle-aged, older women to fucking watch her and watch her fucking cook and watch her fucking talk about men. And, and so she complains about how fucking no men want to go out with her. Why do you think they want to fucking go out with you? Okay, you're a fucking has-been. I'm sure you're fucking pussies as loose as a goddamn sail on a fucking boat. Okay? Jesus Christ, Drew. You're a fucking has-been. That's what you are. Nobody wants to see you anymore. Okay, the best years in your fucking life, you wasted it on bullshit. Okay, the only reason you even had a career in the past 15 years is because of Adam Sandler. Even Adam Sandler fucking dropped your ass, okay? So get the fuck out of here, Drew. You're just not, you're just not relevant anymore. Fucking get over it. We all get older. 
You can't play the fucking sexy girl anymore, okay? We all know your real story, what you're really like, okay? So cut this shit out, dude. Nobody wants to watch your fucking TV show. Anyway, so that's going on here. Uh, but she invited, because you know, everyone knows that she's got a lot of gay friends. Uh, she invited Anthony over to her show, and he wants to bring a sexy fucking delivery guy there, but they all quit. So he has to to find him one, because okay? that's her job, okay? She, I mean, she has no job. So wh why not? Why not find Anthony a fucking sexy guy, okay? And she sees this guy selling poetry, so she propositions him. He thinks he's being propositioned for sex, okay? Because apparently that's a big problem for him. He's always getting propositioned for sex. Nobody wants to fucking buy his poems, but everybody wants to fuck him, okay? Especially middle-aged or, or old women who wear mink coats, okay? Uh, so that's what he thinks it is, but he turns out that it's not. Uh, Charlotte offers him $300, because apparently he's desperate for cash, okay? And so he agrees to do it, okay? So he goes to the Drew Barrymore show. He wears the fucking romper, okay? His name is Giuseppe. If for some reason, fucking uh, Anthony had time to fucking do a, a monogram of his name on the fucking uniform. His name's Giuseppe. He's there. He comes out of the fucking dressing room, okay, wearing the tight romper. Okay, of course, uh, Anthony already thinks he's fucking gorgeous as shit. And then he looks down at his crotch, and he's got his fucking big schlong uh, there uh, just out there in view, okay? Now, he's got the snake thing, okay? Now, let me tell you something, okay? Let me tell you something, all right? I'm going to raise the bullshit flag here, okay? Why am I raising it here? Because there's no fucking way in hell any guy straight or gay, is going to put on that fucking outfit and not look at himself in the mirror first before he goes out in public, okay? The first thing a normal guy would have done is notice, oh my God, dude, my cock is really bulging out here, okay? You know, it's kind of embarrassing, okay? Everyone's going to stare at this, okay? So what you do is you fold it up, okay, and you're over, okay? You Instead of fucking hanging out like a snake, move it forward and tuck it in like that, okay? Okay, that's why you got to wear underwear, Okay? Uh, this guy obviously is not wearing underwear, so he's got his fucking snake just hanging off to the side where it's, it's clearly visible. It's right there. Okay. If you were like doing like a, like the cover of like a gay porno or something, this would be the perfect shot. Okay. Uh, but, but he acts like he's not aware of this. Okay. It's one of those stupid ass fucking jokes that people like to do on sitcoms where you see something, everybody sees it, but nobody says anything about it. Okay. Especially not the person who's doing it. Okay. It's bullshit. Okay. If my cock was hanging out like that, believe me, it, that's on purpose. Okay, I'm not going to pretend that fucking, oh, oh, what are you looking at? Huh? 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 You know? No, no, no. It's on purpose. Okay? No guy fucking doesn't realize that his cock is hanging out like that. All right? So so that, that's a bullshit flag right there. Okay? Uh, there are ways you can fucking tuck it in. Okay? You'll still have a bulge in the center, but there won't be some fucking snake going across your fucking thigh. Okay? Like it is here. Okay, so that's bullshit right there. Yes, I talk from fucking experience, okay? Uh, that's bullshit right there, okay? No, no, that's not going to fucking happen, all right? But, of course, everybody's got to act like they don't notice it and they don't see it, especially fucking Giuseppe himself, right? So that's going on here, okay? Yeah, okay, so uh, he does the show. Uh, Giuseppe comes out carrying a, a, a big basket. So there, Anthony's on the show. He's being interviewed by fucking Drew Barrymore, you know, and he says, I'm going to bring out my, my delivery man, you know, and he comes out there, okay? And of course, uh, the camera is, is focused on his cock, not on the fucking bread, okay? You know, he comes out wearing a big basket, okay? So he's got his big basket, uh, okay? And then Drew looks at this, okay? She's looking at his fucking, at his fucking uh, package, and she's like, <gasps> Hey, 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 Drew, you're not 13 anymore, okay? Cut it out. <laughs> okay. That ain't Corey Haim, okay? <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> you know, she's been married to Tom Green. Yeah, Freddie Got Fingered, Tom Green. Yeah, that one, yeah. I wonder how he feels about her now. I wonder. <laughs> And I used to like her too, man. I used to have the hots for her, man. Yes, I always thought she was a weirdo. I always thought she was crazy, okay, because of all, I mean, she wrote books about how she'd been fucking uh, abused by her mom, her managing mom fucking forced her to go on auditions. I think maybe he pimped her out. She pimped her out too. I don't fucking know. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a horrible relationship with her mom. Uh, I don't think she even really knew her dad or her dad died of a drug overdose. Her dad was the son of, of Lionel Barrymore or some shit like that. Who fucking knows, okay? So she comes from a prestigious acting family. Hence, that's where she got her career, okay? Steven Spielberg discovered her, put her in E.T., and then she was off to the races after that, okay? But she had a very big uh, party st party lifestyle as a minor, okay? So, yeah, she, she's all fucked up in the head, okay? You don't, you don't just get over that kind of fucking childhood, all right? So, of course, Drew's like, oh, my God, you know, you know, looking at his Johnson, okay? Hey, you know what? What can I say about that, okay? Look, okay, 
this is my, my personal opinion on the whole package issue is this, okay? Some guys have bigger ones, some guys have smaller ones, okay? Most guys have are in the middle, okay? Most guys are in the middle, okay? Uh, but, but you know what? If you want to see average people with average penises doing average things, okay, uh, then you're going to just live your life, okay? Because <laughs> that's, that's what the real life is, okay? But uh, uh, television is, is supposed to be entertaining. Okay, the show's supposed to be entertaining. Okay, so you can't just show average. Everyone gets average. They want to see something above average. Okay, they don't want to see you no know, a drama in a movie or a TV show. A drama has got to be more dramatic than real life. Okay, that way you're in. It's not what you always see every day. You see what I mean? Okay, so of course this show being about sex and all that, you know, they can't just have a, an average penis. Okay, no, it's got to be a big penis or it's got to be a really small penis. Okay. You can't, people can't just act like normal people. They got to act like incredibly eccentric people or incredibly boring people. Okay, because that, that's how they build the entertainment. Okay, this is like a it's supposed to be kind of like a romantic comedy. Okay, which fails in the comedy, but that's what they're trying to do. You can tell the rules that they're putting. Okay, uh, the tone of the show. Okay, so of course they're not going to have guys with average penises. Okay, because if they had that, well, we see that in real life. You see what I mean? So it's got to be something exciting, something extra, something you don't see every day to get you to tune in so you can watch the next episode. Okay. So, of course, you know, since this show's written by gay guys uh, and trans things, okay, what does everyone want to talk about? They want to talk about fucking big penises. In fact, honestly, I think this is more for the fucking, the, the gay guys watching the show than it is for the fucking women. Okay? Okay? And talking and talking as a guy who knows a little bit about big penises, all right? Uh, no, this show is mostly for the gay guys. Okay, that's what I'm thinking, okay? Because women, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's important. I've said this before. When, whenever we talk about big dicks on this, on this, when I'm reviewing here, I said before, yes, Okay, big dick is important, okay, but it's not everything. It's important, but it's not everything, okay? And let me tell you something, all right? Okay, having, having a big Johnson, okay, it, if you don't use it right, okay, you're going to hurt her. It's going to fucking hurt her, okay? It's going to hurt the girl, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what women have told me before, okay, is that, um, you know, what women mostly prefer okay is what they call user friendly okay a user friendly sized cock okay now that's a little bit different but it falls in the average category okay uh because yes there are some women with big fucking bushes okay that that can only be satisfied by a fucking arm okay and then there's women with tiny ones okay and they can't handle something like that they don't want something like that going in there they would rather have a smaller one you see what i mean so uh yeah so i mean there's 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 different sizes of women too just like there's different sizes of guys this show's gonna focus on the big guys because that's what gay guys wanna see. Okay, that's what gay guys wanna talk about. All right, yes, some women too. Okay, but if you ask any woman, okay, well, hey guys, well, hey, obviously your woman's not gonna answer this question if you have to, but ladies, <laughs> ladies, if you ask another woman, okay, uh, you know, have they ever had a big one? You know, <laughs> have they ever had a fucking arm up there? You know, all the way up. Yeah. I've ever had one of those, <laughs> the fucking the, the John Holmes special, <laughs> the Titan, <laughs> the Dark Tower. <laughs> okay. Well, if they've ever had one of those, all right, <laughs> they'll tell you the truth. Okay, that yeah, I mean, it, it, for, for most women, it hurts. It hurts. Okay, <laughs> so you got it. Like, you know. <laughs> That's true. It's fucking true, okay? Women prefer user friendly. That's been my experience. That's 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 that, that that's what I've learned. There's different sizes of pussies, just like there's different sizes of cocks, okay? The goal in life is to find compatible. Okay? Find compatible, all right? <laughs> and then again, you know, um, you know, most women they, they can't come from just that. From, from intercourse, you gotta fucking, you know, well, hey, I'm not trying to teach a sex class here, okay? But y'all know what I'm saying, all right? You ladies know what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> and guys, if, if you don't know what I'm saying, okay, there's books on it, go fucking look it up yourself. I'm trying to review a show here, okay? And I give you a course, okay? <laughs> on sex. All right, anyway. Although I probably should, because I mean, this whole fucking show is written by fucking gay guys. They don't know what the fuck, how to please a woman at all. Okay, moving right along. Okay, so that's going on here. So it's Big Johnson showing, okay, Drew Barry's gonna go, <gasps> <laughs> Do you know how bigger? It's gonna get any bigger. And the aunt is like, you know, honestly, I had no idea it was gonna be this big, and I had no idea how much bigger it's gonna get. There's just no way of knowing. Yeah, so Anthony's fucking getting getting turned on by this too. And this is fucking some shit, man. I swear to God. And of course, uh, you know, uh, Charlotte's there on TV at home watching this. She's like, oh. 
<laughs> yeah, so she's she's getting in on the act too. Yeah, <laughs> this is how you know. Uh, this is how men are treated on the show. Okay, of course, <laughs> of course, you know, uh, Giuseppe himself is completely oblivious uh, that everyone around him, the show, the audience of the show, who we don't see the audience, obviously there's nobody there. Okay, uh, the audience, okay, Drew Barrymore, Anthony, everyone, you know, Charlotte, everyone's focused on his fucking big cock. Okay, but he's the only one that's completely oblivious to it. Okay, <laughs> like he has no idea. Let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> If you're a guy and you're proud of what you got down there, okay, you're, you're going to be happy to show it off, okay? In fact, the only reason you're wearing that is because you want the whole world to see you. You know, just like, boom. Just like that, okay? He wouldn't just be like, hmm? Like, he's confused at why everyone's fucking going like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Get the fuck out of here, man. No one's that fucking stupid. Jesus Christ. All right. But they want you to think you're, that he's that stupid because they think you're stupid. Okay. So that's going on here, you know. Drew's like, oh my God, I bet it's going to get huge. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, moving right along. Uh, Anthony's bread uh, ends up being a big hit. Okay. Uh, uh, but Giuseppe doesn't want to do it anymore. He takes off the uniform, puts his regular clothes on, gives him back the romper. He goes, hey, okay, I agreed to do this. I'm done now. And he's like, no, 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 you can't. You can't go. You can't go. Oh, my God. My, my sales have just tripled since you did this this episode. You know? You've got to stay. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm not a, he's like, I'm not the, I am not a, uh, I, I am not a, a model, okay? I am a, uh, I am a poet. He's like, oh, my God, but you're going to, guys. This is New York. There's plenty of gorgeous guys here. He's like, but they're not like you. You know? Swinging past your knees. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God, man. The jokes just, the, the jokes write themselves, okay? They, they write themselves. All right, so yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm not a prostitute. I'm a poet. But you guys in New York, okay? But he agrees to do it for one week, one week only. So you know he's gonna show up next episode, all right? Okay, one of the, um, and then, of course, one of, uh, one of Drew Barrymore's producers comes out. Of course, he's gay, too. And he comes out. He makes a fucking sexist remark. Okay? He sees fucking the bulge. But this time, it's sticking out of his pants instead of the romper. And he says some shit like, hey, you know, you should wear that. You know, you should get a, a quarter hour sleeve for that. <laughs> so, so, of course, it's okay when a gay guy makes a fucking sexist, a sexual harassment remark against a, a straight guy. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if a straight guy makes a sexual harassment remark against a woman, okay, well, then he belongs in jail, okay? Because that, that's basically fucking sexual assault right there, okay? That's what this show is trying to tell you, okay? It's okay when gays do it. It's not okay when straight guys do it. All right, moving right along. Okay, so that's going on here. Uh, Carrie uh, talks to uh, Seema, okay? Ugly fucking Seema about being nervous, okay, about seeing Aiden again, okay? Because she hasn't seen him in a long time. She's going to see him for Valentine's Day. That's not a coincidence, for some reason, you know, uh, he agreed to fucking meet her on Valentine's Day, though he's not seen her in 13 years, and she doesn't know if he's got a fucking girlfriend or not, okay? Or what happened to him, all right? Bull fucking shit, okay? Obviously, if he made a date with you, he didn't even fucking live in New York anymore, he lives in Virginia. But if you fucking made a date with you on Valentine's Day, okay, you emailed him once and he immediately made a date with you, that means he's not fucking seen anyone, okay? Which means that he's fucking miserable. He's a miserable, lonely fucking old man. Okay, who's just as miserable as you? Okay, because a guy, a good guy like Aiden, cannot have a happy ending. He can't have his fucking uh, riding off into the sunset with, with a beautiful woman. No, can't happen for him. He's got to fucking still be hung up about fucking Carrie, the woman that fucked him over twice. All right, <clears throat> after all he did for her too, you know. Anyway, so that's going on here. Uh, she's scared to see him. All right, blah blah. Okay, she hasn't seen each other thirteen years. Okay, uh, there's a woman there uh, who works at the massage. Uh, they're going to, to get a, a massage, all right? And the woman at the counter, uh, she, she gets it confused because they're only doing couples. It's couples day because it's Valentine's Day. And obviously, Seema and Carrie are not a couple. So she, they're, they're, they're going to go in individually. But they only said, well, we only, we only are doing couples today. Okay, Seema takes all offense. Oh, well, the ad here doesn't say anything about couples. Oh, you know, it's, it's just a tradition here at our store. So, of course, Seema goes full fucking Karen on this poor little girl. Okay, this young woman. She's probably 21, 22 years old. She's just a clerk. She just works there. She 
doesn't make the fucking rules. Okay, but Seema decides to take out all of her frustrations at being ugly, being old, being fat, and, and, and being lonely, okay, and that she has to fucking use a vibrator every fucking day, okay? She takes all that frustration out on this poor young woman, okay? Just the, exactly the way that Charlotte did, okay, with that poor young woman at the fucking store a couple episodes ago. Remember that one? When she wanted to get that fucking dress back, okay? So, like, what the fuck, man? You've turned these people, they're, they're, they're very unlikable, okay? For those of you out there that have ever worked retail or ever worked in any sort of a customer service capacity, okay, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when someone comes in there and just starts treating you like shit, okay? Just starts treating you like you're a fucking piece of shit, okay? It starts taking out all their problems on you, okay? And because you work there, you can't say anything back, Okay, uh, and half the time your manager's not there to handle this customer, so you're the one that's got to sit there and take the abuse. Oh my God, back when I used to work in fucking customer service, oh my God, the, the vitriol that I got. I used to work. I used to work for a car mechanic. Okay, the shit they used to tell me when we told them that we that their car was broken and this is how much it's gonna cost. Hey, motherfucker, I'm not the one that broke your fucking car. But they would do. Oh my God, I had death threats. I'd be, be threatened to beat the shit out of me. All sorts of crazy shit. Just because they, and they're the ones that fucked up their car, not me. You know. So what the fuck? So I know what it's like, and that's why I take this shit personal. When I see a, a character on a show act this way, you are no longer my friend. You're no longer someone I want to fucking talk to or associate with. Okay? How dare you treat people like that? Okay? How dare you fucking treat people like that? Okay, the way Seema's treating this poor young girl. You know, get the fuck out of it. here. It's one thing to complain to corporate. It's another thing to fucking take it out on this this girl who's making fucking minimum wage, for Christ's sake. You know? That's bullshit. I hate it when fucking people act that way. Seema's definitely one of those fucking Karens. You know? And, of course, Carrie's there, just like Carrie was there when when, uh, when Charlotte was acting that way. Okay, Carrie's there to defuse it. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, we don't have to go there. No, no, no. We're going to go. Uh-uh. You know, and she's like, well, you know what? I have a solution. Maybe you could just pretend to be a couple, you know, and then we'll let you in. She's like, no, I can't pretend to be a couple. I'm too, I'm too busy pretending to be not insulted. I want to talk to your manager right now. You know, just, just like that. Man, get, the, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of this show, Seema. Get the fuck out of this show. I don't give two fucking shits. You know what, Seema? I hope you fucking get hit by a car and fucking die. That's what I hope fucking happens to you. You goddamn fucking bitch. You know, treating people that way. Get the fuck out of here. I don't give two fucking shits about you anymore, Seema. Fuck you. Keep pretending you have a boyfriend. Yeah, keep telling your parents you have a boyfriend. Yeah, keep, keep doing that. Fucking cunt. All right, moving right along. Okay, this poor girl's name is Kayla, by the way. Kayla, all right? Okay, so uh, Carrie calms her down, you know. And talks her out of there, okay? Carrie actually is the one that gets her out of the fucking store. Gets her out of the fucking massage bar. You know what? Let's just go. Let's just go, okay? So she, of course, Seema's got to have the last word, okay? She's, she's still got something. She's got, I'm going to bring this up with yup. Like that, okay? So she's got to fucking complain online, okay? Holy shit, man. I swear to God. And we're supposed to sympathize with these people? Get the fuck out of here, okay? So uh, next thing is Charlotte. Charlotte and Rock... Okay, uh, they're waiting in a modeling agency lobby. They're in a lobby, okay? Uh, and they're not in New York, they're not in Manhattan, they're somewhere, I think they're in Brooklyn or something. Who the fuck knows? Anyway, so they're waiting there. It's 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 1.40, they were supposed to meet with an agent at one o'clock. 40 minutes late, Charlotte's getting all pissed off. Rock doesn't give a shit. She doesn't give a shit about her mom, she doesn't give a shit about looking good, she doesn't give a shit about nothing but herself, okay? She's just fucking there, okay? Charlotte's more the one pushing Rock to be a model, okay? Trying to relive her youth through her daughter, okay? You know you can't say daughter because fucking, you know, Rock is fucking non-gender, non-binary, non fucking gender she doesn't like labels which means that she's fucking gay she's trans okay and of course her parents are going along with it okay they gotta watch their pronouns around their own fucking daughter yeah like that whatever happened to fucking my family get the fuck out of here all right so that's going on okay she get pissed off so she decides she's gonna go up there and complain to the fucking receptionist and the receptionist is some fucking rupaul looking motherfucker i don't know what the fuck uh it, it, i don't know if it's a dude trying to look like a woman or if it's a woman trying to look like a dude i don't give a fucking shit i don't fucking know all right, uh, but it's one of those, okay? Uh, definitely definitely in line with what the show's about now, okay? Uh, so that's going on here. And she's like, this is disrespectful, you know? I'm going to complain. So even fucking, even, um, even Charlotte's being a Karen, okay? We just went from one Karen to another Karen, just like that. How the fuck are we supposed to like these characters? All right, so she goes to complain, okay? Who, who do they think they are? No, bitch, who do the fuck you think you are? But the whole world has to shut down for your ass. God damn. Anyway, so this trans, uh, uh, it, it's basically, imagine Smokey the Bear if he was trans. 
Okay, that, that's what this receptionist looks like, all right? Okay, so she goes, uh, Charlie goes up there, charges up there, and says like, okay, um, okay, so she's like, you know, what's taking so long? We've been waiting here for 40 minutes. Uh, yes, well, that woman, that girl over there was waiting longer, and that one has been waiting longer. Like, oh, yeah, but are any of they in a Ralph Lauren ad? You know, because because Rock's in a Ralph Lauren ad. Because <laughs> she was hanging out at the park, and some fucking dude in a trench coat came up to her and fucking propositioned her and gave her a fucking Ralph Lauren card. Okay, because that's how it works in real life. All right, you know, and, she, and so she doesn't say anything about it, so Charlotte goes like, you know what? I have two other modeling agencies to visit today in Manhattan. So we are going to leave. <laughs> and so she grabs Rock and get the fuck out of there. Of course, she makes a big fucking scene. What the fuck is her problem, man? I swear to you. I used to like you, Charlotte. I don't fucking like you anymore. All right. So Charlotte's like, you know, we can't wait any longer today. She has other appointments. You know, so she leaves. Okay. What a fucking bitch. Okay. Now back home, they make it back home. Okay, uh, and Rock, okay, who, by the way, looks like shit, okay? She looks like a fucking, she looks like Meg from fucking Family Guy. Okay, no makeup, fucking beanie, fucking oversized baggy coat, baggy pants, just looks like fucking no makeup, just looks like fucking shit, right? Okay, um, nothing feminine about her at all, okay? Uh, she tells Charlotte that she doesn't want to be a model anymore. She's like, ah, you know what, Mom, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done, I don't want to model anymore, okay? And, and Rock's like, it's not fun, okay? Okay, and you were gross today, Mom. You know? You, you acted like a real dance mom. You know, you said that I could quit this modeling thing whenever I wanted. Well, guess what? I want to quit. But what about, but, but what about all the time and effort and the 3,000 Instagram followers you have? She's like, mom, that was all you. Okay, you're the one that did all that stuff. You're the one that made all those Instagram accounts. You, you're the one that did all that stuff. Mom, not me. You know? Which is kind of weird because, you know, Rock really doesn't give a shit about looking pretty at all. She does not give a shit about looking feminine. So why would you want to fucking model like that, you know? Um, so I'm going to I, I'm gonna have to agree with Rock on this situation, okay? You know, I mean, it, clearly Charlotte's the one who's trying to relive her youth through her daughter. Okay, she's trying to push her daughter into modeling because that's what she did when she was that age, okay? But your daughter is not you, Charlotte. Okay, your, your daughter's a fucking tomboy. That's what we used to call it back in the day. They don't call it that anymore. They call it fucking non-binary, non-gender conforming, fucking trans bullshit. But back in when I was a kid, we called it being a tomboy. Your daughter's a fucking tomboy, okay? She didn't give a shit about looking pretty. She didn't give a shit about acting like a girl. She doesn't give a shit about any of that fucking stuff, okay? Charlotte is the one that gives a shit about that stuff. Because Charlotte's very feminine. She might be a bitch and a carrot now, but she's always been very feminine. Which is one of the reasons I liked her so much. Because she acted like a lady. She acted like a girl, okay? Uh, uh, but but your, her daughter's not like that at all. Okay, so she needs to learn how to respect her daughter's wishes. Her daughter doesn't want to be a fucking model. It's Charlotte that wants her to be a model. So Charlotte, you know, shut the fuck up. Okay, your daughter doesn't want to be a fucking model. And in, in this case, I'm going to back up Rock. You can't force your kids into shit that they don't want to do. I mean, look at me. I got a little boy here, okay? But he doesn't like the same shit that I like when he was his age. And I got to respect that, you know? I, I'm not trying to make another one of me, okay? You got to appreciate your, your, your children are never going to be completely exactly like you. Okay, sometimes they, they will like, like a lot of things that you like. And sometimes they won't. And if they won't, you got to respect the fact that they have other interests, you know? I sure as fucking not like my parents, okay? Uh, <laughs> the stuff my parents were interested in are not the shit that I'm interested in, okay? And that's just the way it is, okay? But you have to respect that, okay? Uh, she's trying to turn her daughter into her, another her, and you, and you can't, and you shouldn't try to do that, okay? So Rock quits. I'm going to back up Rock on this one. I, 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 I'm, I'm taking Rock's side on this one, okay? And she's like, you know what? That That's all you do, Okay? That's all you, mom. The Instagram, okay? The followers, that's all you, mom, not me. Okay? Now you can spend all the time with your real client. And she'll, what real client? And goes like, that one over there. And then she walks away. Well, her real client is her fucking dog, uh, Richard Burton, okay? <laughs> yeah, she, her dog, Richard Burton. She created an Instagram account for her fucking dog. Okay, you see what I mean? You see what I mean with fucking, with, with, with Charlotte? Okay, fucking, this is, this is a fucking, this is a cat lady. Okay, whose husband is like probably one cheeseburger away uh, from dying, okay? She's one cheeseburger away from being a cat lady, okay? Which is pretty fucking sad, all right? She cares a shitload about her fucking dog. Then she, she cares more about her dog than she does about her own fucking husband. How fucking sad is that, okay? So that's going on here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the next scene is Lily, okay? Uh, Charlotte walks into the kitchen there, okay? And there's Lily, Lily's in the kitchen with her girlfriends, okay? They're jumping around, listening to music and shit, blah, 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 acting like teenagers. Okay, even though they're fucking 17, 
Oh, yeah. Anyway, she goes in there and she brings this cake, okay? And she's like, Lily, I got this for you, okay? And Lily's very good at one thing, okay? And it's not playing the piano. She's very good at disrespecting her mom and treating her mom like a nuisance and like a piece of shit, okay? Lily, more so than Rock, orders her mom around, uh, tells uh, Charlotte what to do, shows her no fucking respect, uh, places demands on her, throws tantrums, okay? Talks back to her, tells her to shut up, okay? And now that, now that Charlotte came home, she's basically telling her own mom, get the fuck out of here and leave me alone. And she's like, but, but I brought you this cake. I brought you this cake for your, for your fuck the boys part. She's like, no, no, we don't need no kind of cake, mom. Okay? My friend already brought brownies here. We got way more than we need. Okay? So why don't you just get the fuck out of here? Oh, uh, okay, okay. I will, I will. Sure. I, you know? So that's what she does. Her mom, her, Lily just fucking disrespects her mom. Tells her basically get the fuck out of here. Leave, leave us alone. We're trying to have fun here without you. We don't want you here. And fuck your cake that you brought for me. I don't give a shit about it. I already got brownies here. That's all we need. So Charlotte's like, okay, 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 you leave, man. You know, and so, but she does grab a brownie and eats it, okay? Because obviously, because that's going to come back later. Okay, so that happens here, okay? She takes a brownie and she fucking eats it, okay? Uh, next scene, uh, they're waiting at a table. Uh, Charlotte complains to Harry at the restaurant, okay? Because it's Valentine's Day. Uh, he did book the reservation for them at 5.30. It's like 6 o'clock now, and they still haven't been sat. The restaurant's packed. Well, it's Valentine's Day. Restaurants are always going to be packed, okay? And fucking um, uh, Charlotte just starts having a fucking meltdown. Okay, she's kind of like, like she's, she's talking out the side of her ass, all fucking crazy and shit, you know. She's complaining about the events of the day, how Rock fucking decided she don't want to be a mom anymore. Okay, she, she bought, you know, and I bought that cake for Lily, and Lily didn't want to eat it, blah, 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 you know. And, and Harry's just standing there like, damn, you know. It's been 40 minutes, they haven't sat us yet. And, and that, that host is over there, won't even make eye contact with me. So even though his wife is having a meltdown here, he's more concerned about what's taking so long for him to get sat, okay, at the restaurant, Okay. You know, uh, and then of course, and of course, Charlotte's complaining out loud. Oh my God, and I brought that cake for Lily, and she didn't want to eat it. You know, I, I didn't even take a lunch today. I was so busy uh, taking rock from fucking modeling agent to modeling agent. I didn't have time to eat today. Oh my God, yeah. You know, <laughs> and then she comes over, and I come over, and she tells me she doesn't want to be a model. Like what the hell? <laughs> you know, and I wish she had told me she wanted to be a model before I got her a blue check mark on Instagram. You know, all this kind of fucking shit. She's just fucking talking outside of her ass. Harry's not really paying attention to her, okay? Harry's like, calm down, honey, calm down, okay? You're going to give yourself a heart attack. And Charlotte starts acting all loopy. She's like, oh, Harry, I can feel my blood. My face is all tingly. You know, <laughs> she says, she says, no, 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 Charlotte, that's your fucking antidepressants. Any woman like you... Okay, is a walking pharmacy of fucking antidepressants. Okay, it's women like you that fucking keep pharmacists in business. All right, she's like, Oh my god, what if I'm having a stroke? He's like, You're having a stroke. And right? so he goes over to the host, Hey, man, 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 my wife is having a stroke. He's like, Uh, that's not gonna work. He said, Call a fucking ambulance, my wife is having a stroke. Okay, so the ambulance shows up there, okay? And they're taking her away. They strapped her on the gurney and they're pulling her in there. They won't let they won't let Harry get in the back of the ambulance. You know, oh my god, he's like, that's the love of my life. She's the love of my life. God damn it. You see what I mean? Not gonna understand, you know, you loving your wife and shit, but god this woman doesn't even respect you, Harry. This woman doesn't even fucking respect you. That's the love of my life. Is that why you put up with all her shit? You have no fucking agency in your own fucking family. So that's going on here. There's a little funny scene there. Okay, she said, don't leave me now, Charlotte. Don't leave me now, please. She's like, oh, Harry, Harry, please. If I die, make sure Carrie picks out my, 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 picks out my burial dress. Ah, I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. Ah, ah. You know, that kind of shit. And he's like, he tells the pyramid, is she gonna live? He's like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> You know, okay. <laughs> so it was kind of a funny scene. It was a little bit of a funny scene. All right, so moving right along. So that happens, okay. Uh, next scene is Naya, okay. Now, Naya is fucking cooking by herself, okay. She's all alone, cooking by herself, okay. Uh, Miranda uh, comes into the kitchen there because they live together now, okay. Uh, and she's wearing this blue dress, this tight blue dress. And by tight, I mean to show how fat fucking Miranda is, right? Because Miranda's not fucking sexy at all. But she's wearing this tight dress as if she's going somewhere formal, somewhere nice, 
Okay, she's going on her date, our first date with that lesbo she met at the fucking bookstore, the one that was fucking uh, reading out loud uh, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Okay, apparently she 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 uh, she reads audiobooks for a living. That's her job. So she's gonna go on a date now. Apparently, uh, she called her. She called Miranda and said, "Hey, we're not gonna go to a restaurant. Just come over to my place." Okay, well, if you're gonna come over to her place, why the fuck are you dressed like that? <laughs> you know, you know what the fuck, Miranda? <laughs> why are you dressed like you're going to the fucking opera if you're just gonna go to her apartment? Okay, but apparently she's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm all excited. Look at me, look at me. You know, no, you look like shit, Miranda. You look like fucking shit. Okay, hey ladies, uh, if you want to know what you really look like, don't ask another girl. Ask a guy, a guy that you trust. All right. Uh, so that's going on. She's cooking. Uh, Naya, however, is not going anywhere. She's gonna fucking spend her Valentine's Day making chalk, stuffing her fat ass with some chocolate souffle that she made that she's making right now, and getting shit faced on fucking Merlot that she has, and jerking off. Okay. She's going to do it by herself. Old school. Okay? And, of course, like I said, Miranda's bragging about it. She's going to meet this ugly fucking lesbo that she met at the fucking bookstore. Okay? At her place for dinner. Uh, Miranda calls it. It's so refreshing and scandalous. No, it's not fucking scandalous. There's nothing scandalous about what you're fucking doing, Miranda. God damn, you know? It's not scandalous, okay? everyone When everyone's fucking doing it, it's not scandalous. Everyone on the show fucks. Okay? So what you're doing is no different than anybody else. You're not fucking special, Miranda. You're not fucking special. This isn't some fucking romance novel that you're living through, okay? You're just going out to get fucking laid, okay? Happens to everybody, all right? Nothing special about it. Nothing scandalous about it, okay? This ain't the 1800s and you're going for a fucking booty call, okay? 2023, you're ugly, she's ugly. Fucking make the most of it, okay? It's not like either one of you can do much better. All right. So now it's like, I'll be okay alone, no problem. Me and my chocolate <laughs> my me evening <laughs> you know, me and chocolate a match made in heaven and I'm not just saying that because I'm black <laughs> yes this is the level of writing that's on this show okay now you go girl <laughs> you got your your A plus in queer sexuality <laughs> <laughs> you go get your A plus in queer sexuality uh, from 19th century literature. <laughs> it's a little bit funny. Okay, so Carrie, uh, next thing you know, so that that's going on here. Okay, and she says, "Okay, Miranda says, like tally ho." <sighs> Why the fuck did she say that? Well, she's a fucking three musketeer now. All right, so that's going on here. Uh, Carrie goes to date, uh, goes goes to meet meet Aiden for their date. Uh, she gets confused. A restaurant. It's at sixty is the address. So she's one restaurant on the left side, one restaurant on the right side. So she goes to the one on the left side. Okay, and they see her there. Okay, she gets a tiny little fucking table. <laughs> okay, and she just sits there waiting for Aiden. Okay, she's wearing a fucking trench coat with a lot of fucking flowers on the back. What the fuck kind of trench? I don't fucking know. I, I gave up on the fashions a long time ago. Okay, it's a little restaurant. Okay, she's got a tiny little fucking table. Okay. Okay. Meanwhile, at the emergency room, uh, Charlotte's there. Uh, she's on the bed, and Harry's there, all fucking, uh, fuck, you know, fucked up, wonder, worrying about his wife. The doctor comes in, goes, and he tells her basically, "Hey, listen, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. Okay, uh, you're just high. Okay, you just got, you got, you got, <laughs> you got cannabis in your system." She's like, and Harry's like, "My wife is not high." <laughs> He's like, "Well," uh, and then she says, "Oh my God, Harry, you know what? I did eat a brownie that one of Lily's fucking friends made. I did eat one before we went out." You know, and, and then he's like, the doctor's like, yep, well, that explains it right there, space cake. <laughs> Is that what your kids are calling it these days, space cake? <laughs> That's not what we called it back in the day. And, and Harry's like, I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill our oldest. But at least you're not dying. Yeah, you're not going to do shit, okay? You're not going to do a goddamn thing to Lily. Lily tells you what to do, Harry, okay? Lily tells you what to do. Charlotte tells you what to do. No, you don't tell anyone what to do in that fucking house, all right? So Charlotte's like, you know what? In the ambulance, my life flashed before my eyes. You know, I, 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 and I looked at myself and I realized that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a momager for Rock. I'm a maid for Lily and I'm a pimp for Anthony. That's no kind of life. What happened to me? Where am I in all this? Jesus fucking Christ. How many years has Sex and City been on? Every fucking episode is devoted to you, to you. And you still haven't fucking figured out who you are. Where am I in all this? This is a fucking midlife crisis, bro. A close to death crisis because you're, you're you're too old to be midlife, right? 
She's like, I'm gonna call Marcus Sapien, the gallery owner, played by Victor Garber, who's gay in real life. And I'm going to go back to work at his gallery. And I'm, and, and it's not the pot talking either, Harry. I'm focused this time, for the first time in my life, I'm gonna focus on myself. Get the fuck out of here, okay? You, this whole show you've been focusing on. The whole fucking time, the, the, the whole idea of fucking Charlotte has been a woman who focuses on herself. She has never focused on anyone else. God damn, okay? All the fucking bitches in this show focus on themselves. That's what the fucking show's about! This show and fucking Sex and the City was all about them focusing on themselves, not on other people. Not their boyfriends, not their husbands, not their fucking kids, on themselves. Oh boy, all right. I'm gonna stop my review right here, Bob actually to continue my review of And Just Like Crap. I thank you very much for watching this long and I'll see you soon on the next one, bye.